Hi YouTube, it is Numistaka back with you here again. I had the pleasure of visiting Sovereign Rarities in Mayfair today to take a look at some of the coins that are going to be featured in the Sovereign Rarities number two auction, which is happening this September on the 24th. And while I was there, I asked Steve Hill to give us all a quick rundown of the history of the key coins that are going to be auctioned on this uh, particular day. First coin we got here is the Victoria uh, Golden Jubilee five pound gold piece uh, in proof state, uh, proof 63 ultra cameo from NGC. Uh, these coins were struck for the 50th anniversary of the reign of uh, Queen Victoria. They are issued as part of the proof sets. Uh, there are only 797 sets that were minted. So it would have constituted part of one of those sets originally. And it's a grand five sovereign piece uh, with a Jubilee style head by Joseph Edgar Bowen. Uh, very popular with collectors. Uh, has a milled edge. And as we say, it's a Bruce 63 Ultra Cameo and it's going to feature in the Sovereign Rarity Auction. Moving along to the next coin, we have the uh, Henry VI uh, Gold Noble. Uh, this one is one of the rarer varieties. Uh, it's the pine cone mascal issue and it's uh, in a proof 60 uh, ms64 holder uh, which is the finest graded at current currently by pcgs um, i don't think any of those are graded by ngc currently um, it's a very rare issue it's only issued for a two-year period in the reign of uh, henry the sixth uh, it's only issued around sort of 1430 1431 that sort of period of time um, carries the initial mark of a list at the top and it's called the pine cone mascal issue because the legends on these coins have different stops and the stops uh, are formulated with pine cones and there's a mascal which is like a diamond rhombus shaped object that features at least once on each side of the coin as well. The next coin we got here is the uh, Charles II Redite crown which was the famous crown issued by Thomas Simon, it was engraved by Thomas Simon um, towards the competition he was having with the Rotier brothers in the, in the reign of Charles II. It dates to 1663. It carries the what was called the Redite edge. Um, it's a Latin inscription around the edge of the coin. Uh, it's the famous portrait by Simon. It's actually signed by Simon under the bust. Um, it's very rare indeed. Um, no more than about 10 pieces exist today. It's been graded by PCGS as a specimen 35. It's not a MS, it's not a proof, it's a specimen grade because these were issued before proof coins were commonly made. Uh, they didn't have quite the technology perfected for a proper proof coin in those days, so it's actually called a specimen. Uh, it was a part of the competition against the Rotier brothers, who were Dutch brothers from Holland, who uh, were put against them in competition to see who was the best engraver. It's thought that Thomas Simon missed a deadline to uh, submit his designs and the Rotiers were very much in favour of Charles II anyway, so Simon lost out in the competition and then he made his famous petition crown after that to petition the king to give him the job back, but he failed, unfortunately. Um, it's got a fantastic provenance as well, going right back to uh, Sir John Evans, who was a famous Victorian numismatist and was the uh, president of the British Numismatic Society at the time, or the Royal Numismatic Society as it was then. Uh, next coin we got is a superb piece. It's the gold hammered spur rile of 15 shillings of James I from his third coinage, which is the latter part of his reign, the last coinage. The 15 shilling piece is extremely rare. The design of this coin is spectacular. It carries the uh, design of the English lion holding the scepter behind the and holding on his other hand the uh, the uh, royal arms um, and the 15 shilling denomination either side lovely reverse with a, a sunburst on the reverse with the uh, catrafoil and the crowned uh, lions and lee surrounding uh, it's an extremely rare coin and it's in superb condition um, this one has a mint mark of a spur row as well uh, which is like a star shaped object with a pierced center um, it's graded MS63 by PCGS. It's probably one of the best hammered coins I've ever seen, I think, really, um, looking at the grade of it. It's just got one tiny little nick, I think, on the uh, on the obverse side, and maybe one on the reverse side, which obviously makes it an MS63, but that is also the finest graded. Uh, next coin we got is the Victoria 1880 Proof Sovereign with a milled edge with the St George reverse, uh, which is an extreme rarity. Uh, I've only ever seen this one come through a couple of times over the years, or a few times. It was once part of the famous Bentley collection that was sold at Baldwin's in 2012, uh, which I, I catalogued at the time when I worked there. 
Um, it's coming up in the Sovereign Rarity Auction number two on the 24th of September. It's a Proof 61 Cameo. The label says from NGC it is X Bentley Collection. Uh, these coins were thought to have been struck because the uh, Melbourne Mint Master at the time wanted to put some coins on display in the International Exhibition in Australia and he requested the Royal Mint to make two proof coins of every coin they've ever struck at the time to formulate a part of a display. So you have an obverse and a reverse of every single coin. So at least two were struck of 1880 with St George Reverse, London Mint. Uh, so you could display an obverse and a reverse. Um, maybe a few more were struck, but we only know, I only know this one coming through in, in recent times. So it could be the sole survivor possibly, unless there's one in the museum somewhere, of course. But that's an extreme rarity, and that's going to be in Sovereign Rarity Auction number two. If you're thinking about buying the kind of coins you'd normally buy at the Royal Mint, there is an alternative. Why not try Coin Connection, the company that wraps your gold in beautiful pink tissue paper? 2% off during July with checkout code Keith. That's checkout code Keith. Uh, next coin is the William Mary Half Guinea of 1691. A superb piece, it's graded MS62, which is very hard to get for uh, coins of this period of time to get them into the 60s level of grading. Uh, it's a lovely piece, well centred, lovely red toning. Uh, half guinea is obviously a smaller coin. It has the second bust with the second reverse. They had, had a more cruder um, obverse and reverse style for the first bust, first reverse in 1689. But this is the 1691, bit of a scarcer date for gold. I think the gold output was a bit lower that year. Um, it's a great piece, it has an excellent provenance, it comes from the, Norweb, the famous Norweb collection. Um, Mrs Norweb's collection was formed with her husband, they both collected coins in America in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, the famous Mrs Norweb collection was sold in three parts at Spink back in the 1980s. The next coin we got is um, a very unusual piece, it's a very unusual half crown of Georgia Fulf. It's an uh, 1824 half crown, uh, but with the bear head, which was not issued for currency until 1825. 1824 pieces are all patterns or proofs. Uh, this is the one that's so-called struck from polished dies. Uh, it does have quite a small character set used for the obverse legend compared to the currency ones later. There's just a slight difference in the sizing, I think, of the characters and the legend. Uh, the date's quite small too. Um, it's uh, got a lovely design with the third reverse of George IV for his half crown with the crowd shield of arms on the reverse. It's been graded proof 63 plus by NGC. And it comes from the uh, famous LM Node collection, which was sold not so long ago by Mark Rasmussen. Um, he was a major collector in the 1970s, and quality was the key. Um, I don't think I've seen a, a better 1824 pattern half crown, but you don't see many of them anyway, because they're rated um, about rarity 4, rarity 5, I believe. So that's a real rarity for the auction in half crown series. Next coin we got is the Edward III Gold Helm. Uh, that is an extremely rare piece. There are only two known in private hands. Uh, there are only five known in total, so three are in museums. There's one other in a, in a gold collection that's sort of more or less institutionalised, the pri one that's privately held. It's a collection that won't come up for sale probably for another generation or so. So this is probably the only one you can possibly get. It's in Sovereign Rarity Auction number two. But the Edward III Gold Helm was an interesting coinage. Um, it's, part, it's the smallest denomination of three. There was a gold double leopard, and there was the half leopard, and there was the gold helm, which was the smallest imagine, a bit like a quarter noble, but slightly lower face value. Um, only issued for seven months, because the gold coinage was the first attempt by Edward III at that time. Um, it didn't last for too long, because basically the coinage did not divide evenly for accounting purposes into the European market at the time. Um, and then the noble was introduced after seven months of trying this coinage. The noble and the half noble and quarter noble was introduced, and that was successful, because that did divide into the European mark. So it uh, only was issued for seven months, and survivors are very, the very scant few pieces we have today. Next coin we got is the William III Gold Five Guineas of the fine work type, dating to 1701. This coin is one of the most spectacular designs in the milled series of that time. Um, superb engraving work, with lovely flowing, fiery looking hair of William III. Um, they are quite a common five guinea nevertheless because there was a great coinage of gold at that time uh, in 1701 and it is it does turn up but this one is graded MS61 and any five guinea graded in the uh, 61 or higher sort of level is uh, quite an unusual thing really. There are two varieties of the fine work five guinea, there's a plain scepter reverse or an ornamental scepter. When you look at the reverse of the five guinea piece you see the crowned cruciform shields 
and in the angles you get these emblematic scepters. Each scepter has a different emblem at the top. Um, but the handles of the scepters can either be plain or they can be ornamented. And when you get ornamented they have sort of flurry, sort of leaving uh, design, um, uh, ornamental work coming off the handles. And this one is not that, this is the plain handle scepter. So uh, one is, it's never really been worked out which one's rarer. Uh, but the plain one is quite hard to find compared to the ornamental one, in my opinion anyway. And that's MS61 with NNGC, also in Sovereign Rarity Auction number 2. Uh, the final coin we're looking at here is the um, gold 1820 double sovereign or two pound piece of George III. Uh, this one is uh, graded Proof 62 Ultra Cameo by NGC. It's a rare gold pattern, only 60 pieces were struck in 1820. Um, this and its companion five pound piece were literally being about to be struck for, well, for currency uh, around the time George III was about to pass away. In fact, uh, it is said that he actually passed away the night before they were actually going to be struck. And so it instantly became a memorial coin to George III rather than one that was for him when he was living. And uh, originally it was only supposed to be 20 pieces of each struck. And in fact, the five pound piece, there were only 20 pieces struck and possibly two more with plain edges afterwards, but the, the two pound piece, they actually struck more than the order, and they actually struck 60 pieces. So the gold double sovereign or two pound piece is a lovely memorial to George III with his laureate head facing right, date below, reverse with, with Pastrucci's St George and the Dragon, and a lovely lettered edge as well, um, defining that he, it was the 60th year of his reign. Very long reigning monarch, and a nice memorial to his, to his long reign. Steve, I wish I had every single one of these coins in my own collection. And thank you ever so much for telling us the background to these amazing coins that are going to be part of the Sovereign Rarities number no. 2 auction uh, in London on the 24th of September. Uh, if you want to hear more from Steve on the subject of sovereigns, then please tune in again to the Numistaka channel on YouTube, and you will very shortly hear Steve answering uh, pretty much every question you've ever wanted to ask on the subject of sovereigns. I uh, hope you like the video. Please like, subscribe, and I would very much like to hear your comments on these amazing coins that have come up for auction.